Thank you very much for this nice introduction. I'm very pleased and happy being invited to this wonderful place, uh, distinguished uh, colleagues. I'm uh, supposed to give uh, some fundamental, or to present some fundamental observations and remarks on the, the issue of uh, uh, conflicting narratives um, of constitutional orders. And I will do it in a very um, superficial way. So I have uh, five uh, points. I will shortly lay uh, down and speak um, about constitutions and symbolic orders, which is about the cultural analysis of constitutionalism. Two, I will uh, talk about narratives of constitutional orders and give some examples. Typology of constitutional cultures, also very briefly, uh, a comparison of uh, Western European uh, constitutional cultures, and uh, speak about hybridizations, convergences, and resistances within the European constitutional world. And uh, the last point, uh, also very briefly, about the lack of an European narrative. So the cultural analysis of uh, constitutionalism has been introduced al already. Um, uh, I have nothing to add. Constitutions uh, do provide uh, institutional orders for political communities. Um, they do this by explicitly representing the guiding ideas and validity claims of uh, political action. Uh, and communication, the, and uh, constitutions are by no means the mean fixed orders. Uh, it's the constitution is a symbolic form in which uh, validity claims uh, are made, claims of order and claims to validity, but constitutions cannot uh, redeem or honor uh, these themselves. So what they need, indeed, is uh, um, symbolic representations to uh, get and receive and enforce the normativity of the program of uh, uh, the guiding and the fundamental idea. So the meaning of a constitution uh, results from the fact that prominent fundamental ideas and guiding principles are attributed to it. This is my cultural approach to the analysis of constitutions. And an instrumental guiding function is expected uh, of it. So they don't carry the, normative, the normativity within um, itself, but um, they need these symbolic representations and the interplay of collective imaginations, shared meanings, and social practices that makes uh, the Constitution a valid order. To uh, this, this extent, one cannot say that a, um, the normative regulating power of the Constitution is inscribed uh, into it when it's drawn up or uh, ratified. I think this is a positivist uh, short circuit and a nominalistic uh, fallacy. Uh, the normativity results from the fact that prominent fundamental ideas of order and guiding principles are attributed to it and that an instrumental guiding function is expected to it. So this complex process of recognition and acceptance in a space of potentially competing interpretations and political social practices is the, uh, the focus of a culturally uh, guided uh, analysis of uh, constitutionalism. Constitution um, provides institutional orders for political, uh, uh, for political communities. They do this by explicitly representing the guiding ideas and validity claims of political action and communication. And the text preserves the ideas of order. It retains them and makes them available. 
The Constitution gains its significance as a depository of uh, order <coughs> if it is effective as a rule book for the political sphere. The relationship between effect and validity is again crucially dependent on the practices of, uh, rep of uh, representation and uh, direct realization. Symbolizations may result from the process of uh, textual interpretation, from the experience of a celebration of the constitution, from the passing on of a foundational myth, by or from experiential, cognitive, habitual, and effective appropriations through constitutional practices. It is only when the constitution becomes successfully represented or realized through experience, practice, and interpretation that it will become effective as the uh, structuring, action, guiding, and community building force it is expected to be. And on this basis, we can uh, distinguish between different symbolic forms uh, with which the Constitution fulfills or may fulfill its ordering role and with the help of which it creates its own validity. On the one hand, there is a public discourse, the community of interpreters of constitutions. Constitutions do not live through the text alone, but through their uh, symbolic uh, uh, representation, their realization through the adaptation and interpretation of their norms within this public discourse. We can also distinguish other forms of representation of the constitution which there are expressive, narrative, performative, and ritualistic forms of realization. Constitutional ceremonies, celebrations, and festivals are examples of the ways in which the constitutional narrative, the creation, the development, and the present form of the constitution are made readable, audible, and visible. I think this is the, the function of uh, constitutional narratives to make something readable, audible, and uh, visible. So this, um, con these types of uh, constitutional narratives um, let the past, the period of constitutional founding, and the constitutional development appear as if it were identical with the present actual constitution. And the distinctive history of a constitution from the absence of its creation to the presence of its valid application constitutes the reservoir or the repertoire for the symbolization of the specific ideas of order ascribed to the constitutions. So there are plenty of examples uh, and I would like to give uh, some of them. This is not a systematic classification of different types of, of narratives of constitutional orders, but uh, I would like suggest and propose uh, some ideas. Introducing a new constitutional order is about the new beginning of a constitutional order. Staging is making a constitutional order present in an actual discourse commemorating or celebrating a constitutional order is linking the uh, presence to the uh, past of a constitution and interpreting a constitutional order can be uh, done by, by epistemic communities of uh, legal scholars, judges, but also by uh, the people. So let me begin with uh, some uh, uh, examples and uh, it's uh, about the, the French Revolution, Hannah Arendt's uh, favorite uh, example set of the French Revolution, what made the uh, French Revolution a world historical event according to Arendt were not the historical facts themselves but a narrative, meaning that spectators and observers, outsiders or later observers read into it. So the uh, um, ideas that are connected with uh, 1789 there's a very uh, important background uh, for the acceptance of recognition mechanisms of uh, constitutional 
uh, validity. And as we well know, the uh, example of the French Revolution unfolds as a narrative of a radical new beginning uh, and is instilled with a pathos of political freedom, uh, fundamental rights, which inspired later generations of activists in France and, uh, and elsewhere. So we have uh, some other uh, examples in uh, Poland, uh, yeah. again, uh, French Republican order, and the fait en l'honneur de l'être suprême, the American uh, remembrance of the beginning with the people and so forth, or the German, the German case, it's almost the, the same uh, language, uh, so to speak, of uh, pictures, a presentation with some uh, allusions to secularized uh, uh, orders, uh, as you see here on the right hand side. And even the purification, so to speak, of the German Bundestag uh, introduced a new order after 1990 and uh, after German reunification. Uh, this is also a kind of read the passage from an old order to a new uh, order. Um, and um, there are so many examples um, for um, other types and forms of, uh, of narratives. Uh, the staging of a constitution, you see it here in the uh, rotunda in Washington DC, the American constitution uh, put on the shrine, uh, the Declaration of Independence uh, on the left hand side and the Bill of Rights uh, in the National Archives. Here we can observe a distinctive effect of cultural staging, the secularization of the Constitution and founding documents. They are presented as the holy scriptures of the US American civil uh, religion. Uh, another staging of the constitutional uh, imagery in much the same vein can be found at the National Constitution Center in uh, Philadelphia, the place where the Constitutional Convention drew up the still valid uh, Constitution. This is a place where expressive and narrative types of representation uh, are combined. The center becomes the locus of experience where the history of keen constitutional moments the Civil War, race discrimination, freedom of religion, civil rights movement, and so forth, uh, so forth, is told and presented as a history of, or story, of a conflictual but eventually successful incorporation and recognition of the Constitution. <coughs> and uh, this is, I think, a very interesting uh, uh, arrangement of the founding fathers and uh, the, the people can sign the constitution. So they become part, by the signing uh, procedure, they become part of the, the American uh, uh, stor constitutional story. They write themselves into uh, the constitution and uh, by this uh, procedure they uh, recognize and uh, accept uh, the, uh, the status uh, of the American uh, Constitution. So we have even uh, more, uh, this is the uh, English uh, tradition, uh, again the American one, but also through ritualistic practices like uh, prunal uh, services, which are also part and uh, the symb symbolic representation of a specific constitutional culture uh, and also constitutional festivals, uh, funerals and uh, parades. The content of the constitution is brought to light while at the same time the community of citizens is integrated into the constitution and its history. So this is performatively created and reinforced. 
In uh, former uh, Germany, in many regions, there were festivals and parades at which, amongst other things, constitutional document was carried through the streets in a manner akin to a religious, a religious procession. People gathered around um, constitution columns, as in the Bavarian village of uh, Geibach, left-hand side, or the Saxonian uh, village uh, of Zittau. <coughs> But also in the 20th century, there were numerous large constitutional festivals on the Weimar Republic on the day of the constitutional founding, at which hundreds of thousands of people marched for the democratic principles enshrined in the text. As the history of the Weimar Republic shows, these expressive forms of memorializing constitutional founding moment, moments have not always led to a lasting stabilization uh, of the political community. Evidently, not every expressive uh, constitutional practice generates the normative force necessary for the stability of a constitutional order. And let me give you some examples of interpreting and reinterpreting and reaffirming uh, a constitutional order. The Landsgemeinde, where we can see the the demos, the act, uh, also here, the act of electing um, in a representative democracy makes the body of the demos visible and the demos uh, is uh, writing itself into the tradition of uh, the constitution. Uh, this is the English uh, case, the Queen in Parliament, a long standing tradition, and uh, she reads the uh, 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 the, uh, the program of government of the uh, prime minister. Uh, this is another form of interpreting a constitutional order, the epistic, ep epistemic uh, community of, of lawyers, it's a court, and uh, this is uh, also one way to uh, interpret a constitutional order, uh, a ballet by William Forsyth, Human rights, which is, uh, was uh, a very uh, astonishing uh, project performed in Zurich and in Dresden in 2006. So, for the uh, uh, short overview to um, different types of uh, constitutional narratives. Now, I would uh, turn to constitutional cultures and uh, make uh, some remarks on the uh, on various distinctive uh, constitutional cultures in the uh, European uh, context because the narratives are always uh, situated within a tradition and the specific uh, form and outlook of those narratives are intertwined with uh, these uh, constitutional uh, cultures. So. One could define it, um, as I suggested here, consolidated collective ideas and practices that have existed for a long time and which normatively distinguish semantic contents and the fundamental and guiding principles of uh, political orders. So constitutional cultures uh, differ substantially with respect to the question as to whether constitutions rely more strongly on written documents codifications, that is on the medium of script, or whether instead they rely on interpretation, rules of habit and oral reproduction, that is on its orality. Finally, they differ as to the symbolic status the constitution has for the integration of a political uh, community. So I'm proposing and suggesting kind of typology of constitutional uh, cultures and um, that's for analytical reasons and it represents also a shift of analysis from the constitutional state to the constitutional culture. Um, first I would like to introduce the historical evolutionary constitutional uh, culture this is a narrative where constitutional orders uh, are developed in long historical process. The regulations are based on custom and uh, convention. Whatever makes sense proves itself and survives 
the historical change. This understanding of order is equally historical and political. It is less legal and normative. The constitution is not a statute and not constitutive for a political community. The constitution is, however, the expression of a concrete historical political status of a community and as such is the expression of existing and historically proven laws, morals, customs and habits. A constitution of the historical evolutionary type thus at best codifies what already exists and uh, the English constitutional uh, tradition is uh, very much uh, uh, in this uh, specific uh, uh, type of uh, con constitutional culture. England does not have a codified constitution. It has nonetheless always assumed that it does have a constitution. The legal normativity of this constitution is low. Constitutional law has practically no precedence over politics. The parliament has political sovereignty. The legitimacy of the political order is the result of firstly the recognized and proven established rules and conventions. And secondly, the parliamentary system strictly based on majority rules political identity grows uh, historically and the narrative that says the constitutional order is an emerging order and it can change uh, uh, dramatically or uh, very slowly. Second one needs uh, to differentiate between this form and uh, the rational voluntaristic concept uh, of uh, political or constitutional order and culture. So the constitutional order can be traced back to an act of will on the part of the power that created the constitution. In contrast to the former tradition, here the constitution has not grown nationally, instead it has consciously been drawn up and put into force. Um, the constitution is an expression of the unity of the political community and expression of the common ground. So the uh, constitution is considered to be some kind of, sorry, not common ground, but common good. However, it is not the constitution that causes the political unity. The French development acts as a paradigm for this constitutional uh, conception, legal constitutions, <coughs> were always of relatively short duration. They were seldom more than pure instruments of government. The central notions of order were connected with nation or la nation. Yeah, but not with the constitution. Legitima legitimation and identity of republic and nation resulted from the revolutionary tradition, the ideas of 1789. Sovereignty was expressed in the will of the people, which also represents la volonté générale, la loi et l'expression de la volonté générale. Um, and um, it, the constitutional order can be seen as an act of uh, the political. So the constitution, the third tradition, the rational, juridical, constitutional culture, which is uh, linked to the American and the American case and the, to the Federal Republic uh, of Germany from 1949 to, 90, to 2017 since uh, then everything is going to change. Uh, but let's see what's going to happen uh, in the next couple of uh, months. The, so the re Constitution receives a completely different, um, more prominent significance in the rational juridical tradition. In this narrative, the legal Constitution provides a foundation for the unity of the political community. It constitutes a new order. Constitutions are consciously created most of the time Uno actu, they are also the expression of a will to draw up a constitution. The difference between this and the rational voluntaristic tradition is to be found in the prominent legal status of the, of the constitution. Constitutions here represent the legal form of the political unity. They have a high normative legal quality. These constitutions also normally take legal precedence of the political decision-making process, which is reflected not least in the establishment of constitutional courts and their Deutungsmacht, their interpre interpretative or uh, persuasive uh, power. Um, 
and they do have the, the authority to decide on the constitutionality of the laws of the democratic legislature. So constitutions on this pattern are mostly created after, as you already said in your introduction, his historical upheaval, revolutions or fundamental revisions, and they stand for a new beginning. So the narrative is about constitutions and founding act and, and common ground, and the Federal Republic of Germany used to uh, describe itself for a couple of uh, decades as a folk of Grundgesetzbekenner, uh, those who confess to be on the ground, on, to stand on the ground uh, of the uh, basic law. This is my uh, very short uh, um, presentation or suggestion uh, for um, kind of typology. I do not uh, speak about um, Central and Eastern Europe. I'm not an expert on this. So uh, our colleague will uh, uh, teach us how to integrate the Eastern or Central European types of constitution into this uh, uh, typology. Let me very briefly come to the next point we have in the European um, uh, context, uh, convergences and resistances. On the one hand, um, all national uh, uh, cultures uh, do have this kind of past dependency, but on the other hand, uh, we can and we could serve a kind of uh, process of hybrid or hybridization of uh, national constitutionalisms within a framework of uh, evolving uh, European uh, constitutionalism. Um, the integration of the European uh, community um, <coughs> followed very much the, uh, uh, the English way of uh, an evolutionary um, historical um, development. Uh, but, uh, um, however, we could see some uh, repercussions of the European concern Constitutionalization, constitutionalization process um, on the national distinctive uh, cultures. In the United Kingdom, we could uh, observe a discourse on, on written constitution in the 1970s and uh, 1980s, uh, a major constitutional reform project uh, in the United Kingdom was the devolution. Uh, and the uh, integration of the European Convention on Human Rights into British law was then a further significant step in um, the change of the uh, British uh, uh, constitutional uh, culture and was considered to be a kind of superstructure. Um, and also the uh, integration of the European law that had been made uh, binding for the British legal order uh, represented this kind of uh, uh, superstructure to the uh, British and UK um, constitutional culture. Um, the same goes for the uh, French um, constitutional tradition. Um, the, uh, in the Fifth Republic in France, um, above all the Conseil Constitutionnel, installed in the constitution of the Fifth Republic had developed a role in the past decades which comes very close to that of an autonomous constitutional uh, supervisory authority. According to constitutional law, it tests the constitutionality of laws within the framework of, framework of the normal uh, legislative process uh, thus before the promulgation of a law. However, in terms of its functionality, the Constitutional Code Council uh, has slowly but steadily grown into the role of a constitutional jurisdiction with a claim to be the protector of the Constitution even in the face of democratic uh, majorities. So the Constitutional Council uh, was thus increasingly restricting the sovereignty of the legislature 
and the notion that sovereignty is expressed in the law has changed now um, the so-called bloc de constitutionnalité just says la loi n'exprime la volonté générale que dans le respect de la constitution so this is a, a different a new development of limitation of the constitution in light of the protection of, of fundamental rights so these are processes that can be called uh, hybridization of national uh, constitutional cultures in direction of a, a common uh, transnational political space in uh, the European Union. However, as you all know, uh, there is a lack of a European uh, narrative and as we all know, European constitutionalism is um, at a crossroads in so far the uh, discussion of a common European constitution uh, proved uh, to be the, uh, the tipping uh, point of uh, the European creeping constitutionalism. It made something visible that wasn't visible uh, before and it organized the resistance uh, against this new uh, funding, uh, founding project, as uh, Joschka Fischer used to say, a new founding project of the European, uh, European uh, integration. So uh, now we are in the midst of uh, a very conflicting um, process of setting up uh, narratives when going back uh, to the uh, national um, distinctive consti uh, constitutional uh, traditions. The other one, uh, maybe one can cite and refer to Macron, is working on uh, um, strengthening the, the European uh, constitutional cohesiveness. So thank you so much for your attention. I try to stay in time and uh, I almost uh, got it. Thank you so much.